Hey guys, Wother D here. We're back for more Mystical Ninja starring Goemon, and now that we have the chain pipe in hand, I think we have only one thing we can do. That's the first dungeon of the game, and honestly, I am kind of psyched for it, because for one thing, I'm getting sick of flat planes full of freaking robotic enemies that do one half of a heart. Okay. Now, the thing you should know about dungeons, obviously, they're going to be more difficult than the overworld. And that's what I'm really looking forward to. Also, the star block. Thank god these things are around, because they're actually going to make this game a lot more entertaining. Sup, Fortune Kitty, get the hell out of my way now. Uh, all I can say is, if you were not have the he this particular chain pipe, you would fall in the water and realize that swimming really sucks ass in this game. There is nothing good about swimming, unless you're a particular character with a particular pallor. However, we don't have that going right now, so we're just going to have to make do with trying to keep out of it as much as possible. Now, one thing that's nice about the dungeons, and you're going to start seeing some similarities here, is that I would say Konami may have taken a few ideas from a particular successful series beforehand. Legend of Zelda. Because there are a lot of elements here that might remind you of that game. But more importantly, I don't think Legend of Zelda had this shit. Oh my god, it's a sign. Well, of course it's a sign, but there's a sign with a venture to- Really? You're- you're gonna allow me to save my game in a book that everyone can re- Going on, it's trap. Your freaking identity is at risk here. Really? Okay, okay, you- Well, everyone's gonna know your social security number, dude. And then I realize this is Japan. Welcome to the transformed Uido Castle, and if I said that wrong, again, sorry. Now, this is where you're going to get greeted with one of the best grinding rooms in the game. You have six pots, four coins each, time 20 times 6 equals 120. It's pretty good, so uh, keep this room in mind, because I'm pretty sure if you really need the dough, this is a pretty good place to do so. Now, as you can see, the dungeon's going to be pretty obviously laid out. You got rooms, you got doors, you have lock and you have keys. Also, you have traps, tricks, enemies, and etc. So be careful of the traps and the enemies, of course. Oh no, I died. Nope. Like I said, even the death pits aren't death pits, they're pain pits. It's kind of like Zelda. You fall in a pit? Ow, I lost a heart and somehow warped up here. Oh my god, what the fuck is that? Oh my god, please do not remind me of Elmira. Please don't. So yeah, you have a new enemy here. A really big monstrous robot. Just beat it with the pipe and make sure it doesn't come back to its feet ever again. Because no one wants to see that thing greet you with a bouquet of roses. Honestly, I would just greet that thing with a flamethrower. But we can't have too much violence in this game. Only pipe beatings are allowed. And here's a wonderful room filled with water. How is the Lord paying for all this? Is this a pool, or is this just some sort of flooded area that needs to be fixed? All I can say is you got a bunch of shells helping you out here, so make use of them, because I think we're going to have to probably get introduced to swimming. No, nah, not just yet. All I will say is that you will not be getting up to these higher ledges without the help of these turtle-like contraption things. I'm still figuring out. Hello, Fortune Kitty. Not picking you up still, but sorry. Challenge and all. Now, one thing you should know about while you're traveling around the dungeons, you got this guy. Mr. Elephant. He's the one that actually gives you the map to use. And if you would have realized it before, you can't use that map without him. So here's what the map looks like, and my god, this is, like, eluding Zelda vibes. I'm getting hit in the face by them when I opened up that map. So, we gotta be careful getting too cozy with Zelda here, because this game has its quirks that make it a little different, but at the same time, this dungeon's pretty straightforward. I mean, 
locks, deep keys, doors, etc. I will say there's a lot more platforming in this game than in Zelda, because all Link had to do is run across the freaking gap. Oh no. Oh my god, are you fucking serious? Your originality's kind of taking a dip here, Konami. Uh, I mean, you're blatantly taking a very obvious trick from the Zelda games here. And of course, I don't recall ever having to beat on tiles to get that key to appear, but eh, that's good to know. So, as you can see, this place is pretty... It's not too difficult. I mean, this route, they usually literally with the corridors and rooms full of enemies, and you've already seen the whole idea of if a key's not there, you probably have to kill everything. I see that Goemon's observing this big freaking statue. I have bad vibes about that, guys. You know what they t say when you have a big ass statue. Ah, uh, yeah, you want to really watch out this enemy here. This one that just loves jumping over your head. Th that enemy might fake you out a little bit, but luckily, all you can do is just jump in the air, greet its face with your pipe, and that should take care of the problem right there. But just note, that enemy will jump, try to be like Mario, land on your head. So just keep yourself moving forward when you ever meet a particular blue-dressed robot like that. Oh my gosh, where are they getting these presents? I mean, shock or pistol-filled presents. I mean, how do robots... I don't know. I'm just thinking CIA all of a sudden. These technically were the prototypes, and I guess they gave them to these robots. Oh, uh, this is another good room to grind money in. Though not as many pots, as you can see, some of these pots are loaded with dough. I don't know why only the first one had six coins, but he got uh, six, 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 six. He got 14 coins in that room, and you have a very smaller room to travel in, so it makes it a little quick to grind in that room if you need to. Now, one thing I really love about the this game in particular. Just keep an ear out for the music. Also, why the fuck are dumplings cleaning the floor? Okay. Try not to go crazy here. Oh yeah, watch out for this. Yeah, that thing kills you. Don't be a victim. And I'm now hearing the music change. This is the beauty of this game. You definitely want to keep your ears open for it, because when you have the music kind of go along with your progress in the game, it kind of makes you uh, get along with the atmosphere a little bit better. And as you can see, they add more drums, a little bit more percussion, it's just a lot more appreciative having the music kind of just note your progress for you. These guys are assholes. These are not the guys in charge of percussion, so you want to be careful with their little bullet bill action. And trust me, I would not want to have a drummer hit a drum and then have this pellet smack me in the face. That kind of ruins the whole appreciation for his artistic abilities. Nevertheless, there was another fortune kitty that I cannot collect. This challenge is already robbing me of a heart, but I don't care, because, honestly, if you were to play this game and try to get everything in the game, you'll start to realize, oh my god, I'm never gonna die, am I? Well, you got that, uh, whole freaking thing that can crush you and kill you in one hit. Yeah, the reason why I was warning you guys about that last room with those three cru those two crushing pillars, those things can kill you instantly. A, pain a pit will not kill you, but a freaking crushing device will pretty much destroy your existence. So you really, 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 really want to be careful in that room. Especially don't be the, Yoko, the guy that just says, Oh, wonder what this space is for. Done. Yeah, you really don't want to be that guy, okay? And again, swimming sucks ass. I don't ever want to be in the water in this game, ever. I do kind of like that whole trap setup with those, uh, those things are kind of remind me like something is from Sonic and Mario combined. 
Also, if you find Mr. Arrow, Mr. Arrow will be a polite lad and just point out the boss room. Granted, you actually get to the map, see? Look, boss room, third floor, it's like a tower. Things at the top want to kill you. So, what the hell is up with these dumplings? Oh my god, ninjas. Yeah, the ninjas are probably the most dangerous enemies here. They will freaking wreck you if you decide to stay in one spot for more than five, ten minutes. Because they will be constantly chucking ninja stars, and they're pretty damn accurate, as you can see. And they will not stop until they either die or you die, so just take do yourself a favor and hit them over the head, because luckily they don't have the health to support their threat level. Oh boy. Oh boy, this room looks fun. Luckily, you can't get crushed on the uh, bombless pit, but you can fall into it and take some unnecessary damage. So, just use these guys as very, uh, fignit or finicky platforms, and time your jumps, and you should be okay in this room. I mean, it's nothing too threatening. If anything, I kind of appreciate it, because I was kind of hoping to get some more platforming in this game. I mean, this is based off a platformer. Uh-oh, another elevator. What's at the top? Oh. I don't get the joke, but wow, that guy does deserve a beating. I agree with Beat Tomorrow for once. I like his freaking attitude. Also, floating dumplings and another fortune kitty. My god, six fortune kitties already. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No! Shit! The King Robot Congo is your first boss, guys, and let me just tell you this, this guy is the fucking easiest thing on the frickin' planet, at least in this game. You literally have... You literally could just do this, guys. Yeah, that flame breath is just for show. And this is the attack that actually is threatening. This is the one that can actually hit you if you're not smart to jump. So yeah, Congo is pretty pathetic for first boss. I mean, well, pathetic for first bosses anyway. But at the very least, he's got great music, as you can hear. I'll just let you guys listen to it. I mean, it's something you gotta take in. Now, the thing about Congo is the collar. Is that actually a collar, or is that just something that keeps him attached to this ceiling? I honestly don't know, but you definitely can understand that Congo is the statue. So, uh, all you just need, you just need to keep some things in mind. First off, we had a hand blocking a particular hallway. So, if you can put two and two together, you're probably going to have to realize one horrible truth. You're probably going to have to come back here later. But as you can definitely see, Congo is pretty damn unchallenging at all. I mean, seriously, you have like this really safe spot right under his freaking red pimple of a chin. And there's not a thing he can do about it until he gets pissed off at you doing so much damage and breaking his face in. I really feel bad for the big guy. I mean, they can get his hands in this battle to, like, maybe crush your ass, maybe swing, like, shoo you away from the face. Because that, that big blind spy is killing him. And there goes Congo. My god. Invest in some more life insurance, buddy. Seriously, invest some frickin' hands that can actually do shit for you.
Okay, game, don't insult my intelligence like that. Okay, so we got in the shape of a moon, I mean the miracle moon. And that obviously means we are done with this place. I don't know what the miracle moon does, though. We'll figure that out eventually. <gasps> Do I see what I think I see? A hot babe! Sup! Number! No! no. Goemon doesn't work that way, and I certainly don't either. Uh, Lord, what's became of a lot of things, honestly? Uh, your insanity? Is it okay? Yeah, this place is really weird. Peach beef. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's good. That just makes me think about freaking Paper Mario. Is this what Bowser felt like or when he got hit by an A? Pe Wait, I guess it isn't Peach Bean. Damn. Yeah, it'll be tomorrow. Or like Spung. Oh boy, the Lord has a quote unquote favor to ask of me. You know what this means. You, but thou must. I could say the obvious, give me a break, but seriously, that asshole deserves a beat down. If it beats Mario, is like, no, this guy needs to not live for just a moment to go him on. Wait, does this guy give me what I think he's giving me? Oh my god, it's a key card. Damn it. Okay, it's a super pass. They don't have key cards back in feudal Japan. Then again, the feudal Japan also didn't have flying mechanical peach. Okay, never mind. So, we are done with the first dungeon of the game. I hope you guys enjoyed that part, but we're totally not done with this video just yet. If anything, we need to figure out exactly what we're going to be up against next. If, if anything, the next part of the game is where things really get going. And it's going to be one of the best parts of the game. So... Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, stay cool. Adios.